As a person interested in philosophy, I come into contact with a lot of people who I think, wow, that person is really dumb, or they're not very smart. And it really made me examine my own thoughts about this and, and myself and say, hey, how smart am I? Um, is it an IQ issue? And, and so I thought we would look a little bit into this idea of smartness or intelligence. And there are, in fact, a number of different kinds of intelligence. And you know this because of various people who you have been in contact with in your life. You know, there's the engineer, perhaps, is the, the typical example. The engineer is brilliant with math and solving problems, and yet uh, might be more autistic in nature when it comes to empathy for other people's feelings, you know, being able to understand other people's feelings or pick up on those social cues. So a few of the types of intelligence that we'll consider today, uh, are, are the first one we'll look at is linguistic intelligence. And this is the ability to understand and use language effectively. And this is something that I have put a lot of effort into and I still make mistakes. Um, but I think I'm better than 99 of my neighbors, uh, you know, take any group and you think about how do you compare to that group? So if I went to the nearest town of, I live in a rural area, but if I went to the nearest town, I think it has probably eh, fewer than, but we'll say 5,000 people in the town and the surrounding areas. And if I just randomly selected an area and randomly selected a 99 other people and put myself among them, how would I compare to them in terms of linguistic intelligence? And I think I would be in the top one or two people uh, in that particular type of intelligence. Maybe I'm over, uh, maybe I'm self-aggrandizing a bit here. Maybe I would only be in the top three or four, but certainly in the top 5%. And then I look at the, the another type of intelligence uh, that I kind of mentioned about the engineer, the logical mathematical intelligence. And this is the ability to reason and think logically as well as understand mathematical concepts. Well, if we, if we look at the mathematical part, then I would have to say that I would probably be in the bottom 5%, or at least if we got into algebra and such. Um, if we're just talking about multiplication, division, simple mathematics, then I think I would do just fine. I would probably do well with that, but certainly don't understand algebra, trigonometry, any of that stuff. Just, yeah, failed out of it every time I would try a college class, I would fail and just, yeah, yeah that wasn't me. So here I am thinking on that I'm in the top 5% in one area and the bottom 5% in another. However, if I look at that, that idea of logical mathematical intelligence, the logical aspect, I think I'm really good at. And I just don't get the mathematical part. So I guess in that whole term of logical mathematical, well, the logical I'm good, the math mathematical, I suck. How about you? Let's go to another type of intelligence, uh, spatial intelligence. And this is defined as the ability to understand and manipulate visual information like maps and pictures. And I think this might partially be a, the ability to look, I don't know, maybe at a, at a map and say, if this town is 10 minutes from that town, a uh, 10 minute drive, then this one over here is probably a 200 minute drive. Um, I, I'm guessing that's partially what is meant by that that definition. Um, and then the ability to look at pictures and uh, be able to under, move things around, understand them. I, I think this would probably also fall into kind of the interior decorating kind of thing. Like evidently there are warm colors and cool colors. And in order to be a good interior decorator or graphic artist or artist or painter or something like that, you would need to know those things. And so I would rank my intelligence as being very low in this category. I might be able to be trained to understand a map reading. 
think that'd be a neat, fun skill to learn. Uh, but I definitely think I'm in the bottom one or two or three percent uh, as far as that goes. Now, when I say this, this is this randomly selected group of a hundred people. I guess I should first say that there's a good chance that 10 of those people are relatively intelligent and 10% are relatively incredibly stupid. Um, like to the point of barely being able to live on their own and function in life. Um, so maybe I shouldn't be putting myself in that very bottom percent. I think in most areas I'm better than the bottom 10% of people. So maybe instead of saying I'm I'm the third from the last, I should say I'm the 13th from the last. I don't know. Body kinesthetic intelligence. And this is the ability to control one's body movements and coordinate physical actions. Maybe this could also be thought of as uh, athletic intelligence. Um, this, how do you rank yourself? I, I don't, I don't rank myself very highly in this. Um, I'm able to do athletic things. I'm teaching myself to weld and, and I can, you know, pick an item up off of a table and set it into a bowl. I am, I'm not completely incompetent in that area. However, I certainly don't think that I'm very good at that. So that type of intelligence, eh, I'm probably put myself middle of the pack in that area. Where would you put yourself in, in that area? If somebody goes out and shows you how to throw a football, can you practice it a little bit and then do a really good job of it? Or even with a lot of practice, do you end up just, yeah, don't get it. It just doesn't, doesn't seem to spiral or fly as it should. I think that's, uh, that's, that's one that I would put myself probably middle of the pack. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that first thought. And then the last one that we'll look at is interpersonal intelligence. And this is the ability to understand and interact effectively with other people, including empathy and social awareness. Well, this is, this is an interesting topic. This is something that is often opposed or, or the opposite of the first thing that we talked about, which is the, uh, linguistic or, or actually the, the mathematical, the logical mathematical. I think that was the second type that we looked at. And this is kind of the opposite of this. This is the, if we're, if we're talking about this, uh, engineer skill set, this logical mathematical, that would, that would be the engineer. And then the interpersonal intelligence, that would be the salesperson or the minister or the politician or the counselor, something like that. Um, this is a, this is interesting to me, probably the most interesting uh, comparison of types of intelligence because of the type of philosophy that I am interested in, uh, the, the moral philosophy. Many of the people who are in the same rough area. They, they've arrived at the same rough area as I have in terms of philosophic belief. I wouldn't guessing that approximately half of the people are engineers of some sort, mechanical engineers or some sort of software, computer, uh, tech kind of engineers. And that's a huge number. I don't know what percentage of the population engineers make up, but I'm guessing fewer than 10%, probably fewer than 5%, maybe 1%. And then yet in this area of philosophy that I'm interested in, half or more of the people are engineers of some sort. And I think that maybe this obscure little area of philosophy that I ha happen to think is the, the good one, the right one, the true one, the way you come to believe in this philosophy is through logic and reason and, and careful thinking and thinking about the mathematics. You know, there, there are some 
ways of thinking, some philosophies that are arrived at through feelings. And it's more of a, an, uh, you know, what do I want the answer to be? And it just feels like the answer to two plus two should be five. It just, it feels better. But listen to the word five. It just rolls off of your lips. Like it really should be five. And so therefore, I'm going to believe that two plus two equals five. Because after all, what is belief really? Well, that kind of thinking is more of a a mainstreamy, casual feels thing. This is the person who has maybe great interpersonal intelligence, but doesn't have very much capacity at all to logically, mathematically look at problems and solve them. So the this engineering type of person would say, well, no, two plus two equals four. This is how I will prove it. Let's grab two of those things and two of those things. Let's put them together and then let's count all of them. Oh, look at that that comes out to be four. So therefore, two plus two equals four. And they probably have other complex ways of also proving that that is in fact true. Where do these people come together? Where do, where do these people find a happy medium? Because these people are us. These are, these are my neighbors and family members. And it's you, it's friends. It's, we all have these different types of intelligences and I'm just talking about five kinds today. There are many, there's emotional intelligence and there are many subcategories of the ones we talked about and new categories. Well, this has been a real problem, this figuring out how do we all communicate with each other? How do we get along? How do we appreciate and respect uh, the other person or, or at least show them respect, even if we're not feeling uh, or calculating that two plus two equals five is worthy of respect, at least saying, okay, neighbor, I, I disagree. Um, however, it seems that you are quite happy uh, believing that two plus two equals five. You love the way it rolls off your lips. And um, yeah, it's. I, I don't feel like we can have good conversations about adding numbers together, but we can sure share a beer and Watch the sunset and be good neighbors together. And yes, you can borrow my lawnmower next week because yours is broken. Absolutely. Like there are ways that people can still get along together, even though our types of intelligence are different. Well, this is a, a specific concern of mine because the greatest minds in my area of philosophy are the logical, mathematical, engineering kind of minds. And generally, those people are not the best salespeople. There's a reason that engineers are kept hidden in the laboratory and the salesmen are out front actually selling the product. If the engineer came out to try to sell the project that they had so brilliantly come up with, uh, they would probably say something like, um, hey, you stupid imbecile, this thing works better than the other thing, so why don't you quit being an idiot and just buy it, duh. Well, the person with emotional intelligence or, or interpersonal intelligence, uh, interpersonal relationship intelligence, would go about communicating in a very different way because they would understand that that ain't going to work. Well, that's the challenge in our philosophy is that so many people in our philosophy who come up with these great, I'm calling them products, but these ideas or these concepts or these examples are not able to communicate them well to the other 99% of the world. And there's this bottleneck that things get stuck because no one wants to listen to an abrasive, highly mathematically, logically intelligent person be what is perceived as rude and condescending. And so bridging this gap is, is a very challenging thing that I, that I think about a lot. And I think that very few people are good at it. And, and I, I don't think that I am great at it. I think I'm pretty good, but I don't think I'm the best. And I keep waiting for someone in the movement, uh, the, and I, I call it the movement, uh, just kind of people who 
who value liberty, freedom, um, autonomy, who value these things very highly, peace, um, to come about, come bursting onto the scene and be that, that communicator, that uh, translator of great ideas into digestible ideas that everyone can understand and, and agree with. When I say everyone, I, I take that back. Most people, I will say. You're not going to reach the the whole world, but if you could, if you could say, okay, in the geographic area I live, let's say a country or a region or a state or a county, um, what do eighty percent of the people here think? How how do they think? And can I reach them? I don't know who is going to do that. I'm still waiting for someone to burst onto the scene. And so then this person needs to be charismatic. They need to, uh, to be the kind of person who starts a YouTube channel and grows it to 10,000 people within a year. Like they need to be likable and just people tend to just, yeah, gravitate toward them. Well, I have proven that I am not that guy. I, I think I've worked much harder than most people who have four year old YouTube channels or four years of real effort. Um, for your YouTube channels with over 400 videos and um, just over 500 people following. Um, this is kind of proof to me that even if I had the good communication skills, I'm lacking charisma or some other thing, some other it factor that, yeah, I'm not the right guy for this job. But who is? Um, I started this this podcast out talking about intelligence and and we need an intelligent person to do this and i the reason i even think about intelligence is who is going to do this job that is so needed so as i continue contemplating what can i do to help promote my philosophy and by the by the way the reason i care about this is that i think philosophy, if that's even the right word, is the, uh, here I am thinking I'm the top dude and all that. Um, <laughs> if philosophy is in fact the most important thing in deciding how we as humans live among each other, deal with each other, create good lives, etc. for our short time on this little rock, if this is as important as I think it is, well, this problem needs to be solved or we need to have a, a number of solutions or people working on it. And I really don't think I'm the guy. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just slow to jump on board. I, I think that there are so many people who would be better at it than me. I can't name them, though. And as I, as I think about who they might be, I think about a, a person who I really look up to as way smarter than I am, who knows more about philosophy than I do. And, and I think, oh, that person. And I think, no, nope, they don't have the interpersonal intelligence. They don't have the ability to communicate in a likable way, a memorable, fun, likable, contagious laughter kind of likable. You want to have this person over for a barbecue kind of way. And so, oh, that person won't work. So then I, I look at the next person and I go, oh, wow, I think, I think this person could be really good. And they, they actually have some decent social skills. Oh, but they are strange looking or sounding or smelling or whatever. They're not that, that whole package. They're not going to be the big time successful, I don't know, charismatic, leader of a movement or face of a movement and they're just not they're not right for that and then i look at a, another person who has just this this wonderful way about them and is so likable and i'm thinking oh yeah they can communicate it and then i realize they don't have enough of the mathematical logical intelligence they don't really understand the philosophy they only understand parts of it and they pick that one little part and then go for that well, there's another kind of intelligence. Maybe it falls under interpersonal intelligence. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a whole other category. But it's the the 
ability to bring together a lot of different pieces and objectively put them together and, and, and make them something great. And maybe that would be an entrepreneurial intelligence, uh, but this ability to lead a team, uh, to bring together the parts and pieces and, and, and smooth out the edges, amplify the, the good parts, uh, kind of get rid of the parts that aren't so good, connect this person with that person and, and do this and that, and, and then produce a great product in the end. And that person is hard to find. I, I think that there are people out there who are so much better than me at this. I, I don't want to be the person to do that. I, I really believe someone needs to do that. And boy, oh boy, is this going to be a tough one. I, the, you know, the old joke about libertarians, trying to organize libertarians is like herding cats. And that is just so the case. Um, people who are in that engineering, deep thinking, analytical, uh, mathematical, logical, the people who are at the top of that category, who are also independent thinkers, who are who are not fooled by superstitions and such, and who, who are really willing to look at new, fresh ideas, well, those people are not easily managed. They're almost like the... Uh, the artist, the musical artist or something. Try being a manager of a musical act. Oh my gosh. Or an actor or some other artist type. If they're just so difficult to manage. Well, so are engineers. And uh, I don't know how to go about bringing together these brilliant engineering minds who have the great ideas, translating the language into something that is appealing and understandable and accessible and kind and funny and engaging and, and addicting. Like, what if we could make the messages of the smartest libertarian content producers something that people are waiting to, oh, I can't wait until this, this next day's episode comes out. These, this three minutes of brilliance that, that I leave thinking, wow, I have a new idea in my head to, to noodle on and this person motivated, made me, motivated me, made me happy to be alive, wanting to treat the people around me better, have better relationships, make more money, create more good stuff. Like if that person, that, that Tony Robbins type person, that's who we need. We need a Tony Robbins for the consistent libertarian uh, intellectual movement to, to make it accessible to everyone. And that person has not yet popped up. Now, if as I'm as I'm saying this, if you're thinking, "Oh yeah, the person has," you're just not aware of them, Shepard. Uh, this is who they are. Please, please let me know. Don't just write it in the comments. Like, find a way to get in touch with me and let me know. I would love to help support that person and help them get better and and be their assistant and make things happen. Because I am very saddened and frustrated and confused, there's no way that I can be the best person for this task. There's just no way. I'm not that good. But I don't see anyone else stepping up to do these things that I'm describing. This this higher level uh, ownership type management, not just you know, in, in, a, in a big company, there's the person who owns, founds it, starts it, owns it, whatever, president, CEO. And then as time goes on, they want to step back some and start a different company. So then they put a new CEO in and new new C-suite and, and all the way down. So I'm not talking about people who are good at taking orders and then uh, fulfilling those orders by supervising other people. I'm talking about this global big picture uh, idea of, of, of getting out the good ideas that consistent libertarianism has. And, and I really think that if we looked at the population, I live in the, the United States government's uh, jurisdiction, if I look at the 320 million or however many people who live in the United States, I, I would right away just say, okay, 50 or 100 million are, you know, they get a black toe tag in the uh, uh, 
triage, the intellectual triage process. They are just so uh, brainwashed or or stupid. Like they could be really low IQ, and I guess that just measures one type of intelligence or or a few. But in each intelligence area, they could just be really low. They're they're not high functioning people. Or this, or I shouldn't say or. And in this group of people that I you kind of give up on, or I give up on, are people who might be very intelligent in some areas. A person might be a very uh, have been a very successful physician. Now they're retired, and so they have the the smarts to get through medical school. Back when it was even tougher than now, they had the ability to have a family and and you know, be in the Rotary Club and end up being a town council person. And like they were an active part of their community and they really bought into everything and through their social clubs and political involvement and the professional business involvement, they really came to believe in this very dangerous superstition of authority and government being existent (laughs) and acceptable. And, that is, uh, that's scary that, that big, good, cool brains like that could, could fall for it. But, you know, there are big, cool, good brains who fall for a lot of different stuff. And, you know, the scams and all this and other types of scams. So I, I kind of put those people who are, you know, they're, they're bought and paid for and they're now getting older and as a, as a big picture, person interested in spreading our philosophy, my target market is not a person who is 75 years old. Uh, people have a la- average life expectancy of, let's say, 80 years. Um, I, during their last five years, when they're retired and don't have as, as big of an impact on the world, um, because you know if they're not wealthy and they're not socially connected, eh, I'll, I'll just let those people retire. Um, I'm going to include them in this this triaged black toe tag uh, group that eh, it's just not worth dealing with them. So long blah, blah, blah there. But what did I say? 50 or 100 million, something like that. Let's say we have 250 million people left to whom we need to communicate. Well, of those 250 million, maybe 10 or 12 million or fit into that category of engineer, programmer, scientist who is willing to look at something and say, well, I really hope that my examine of photosynthesis uh, concludes that if temperatures uh, increase by one degree, all the leaves will turn blue instead of red. I really hope this. But then the scientist looks into it and goes, no, nope, turns out they're still going to be red. Well, that kind of person who who doesn't change what they believe based on what they want, but rather based on what their reason and intellect and their, their scientific study and testing has proven. You know, maybe there are at best 10 million, uh, 15 million people out of this 250 million people that leaves us with a lot that leaves us with, let's say 235 million people who do not think that way. They are not logical, rational thinkers. And these people are perhaps the manager at the local convenience store or factory. They are perhaps some of the physicians and attorneys. Now, I would say some physicians and attorneys actually do care about the science uh, and about reason and logic, but I think if they've gotten into the field in the last 10 years, maybe not so much. Uh, it, it's a, it's a graying area. I think it, it's turning, it's turning from being a, a, a pure search for truth. And I'm just thinking of law as an example, somebody who gets a Juris Doctorate today is not being taught to think as rationally, open-mindedly willing to accept whatever comes out. Um, they're certainly having a lot of uh, political social pressures put on them, and the results are not not going to be good over the next years, in my estimation. So we we have this 
huge group of people, 235 million, who just are not thinking that well. They're not good at, at thinking about things social. They're not good at, and I would say they're not good. They're not even interested. I, I think if you ask the average person on the street, if we suddenly just snapped our fingers and all of a sudden the, the 15 million analytical engineer programming scientists, thinkers who are willing to accept what their conclusions uh, say who are willing to go along with with truth, you know, even if they don't like it. If we could just snap our fingers and all of a sudden those people, you know, disappear if they went off to a, a meeting or something, and the rest of the people on the street, if you walk up to most of them and say, "Hey, what are a, a, a few of your top values?" they would have no clue. They've never thought about this. That they'd probably just say something. Well, penny saved is a penny earned. Or, uh, well, you got to be nice to people, or something like that. Well, well, maybe those are just poorly stated values. But if you said, well, t why don't you take a couple minutes and uh, get onto your your smart device and and your search engine and look up what values the definition of values, look up some examples of values, and why don't you take ten fifteen minutes and come back to me and tell me what your top three values are. I still think that the average person from the street is not going to come back with with good results. And when I say good, it doesn't have to be something I agree with. You know, perhaps their top thing would be, um, their top value would be faith in a higher power. And, well, that's certainly not something that I go for, but I would accept that as a value that a subjective value that they highly subjectively value. Most people would not be able to do that. However, those 250 or 235 million people in my rough numbers game here, it's kind of important that they, even if they don't completely understand consistent libertarianism, it's kind of important that they're at least a friend, a friend of the the movement, that if you ask them, what do you think about people who don't want government, that they don't automatically reel back and say, oh my gosh, I don't want cars burning in the street and people killing each other. No, we definitely need government. Without government, there'd be people stealing money from each other. And <laughs> We need people who can at least understand, have these ideas introduced that they can muddle over kind of a Larkin Rose's candles in the dark style that they can noodle these ideas and go, wait a minute, maybe taxation is theft. Well, going back to the different types of intelligence, our stereotypical engineer programmer who gets in their face and tells them that bluntly, that's not how they're used to ingesting information. That's how engineers are used to getting information. That's how programmers are used to getting information. Here's the deal. No flowery, cute introductions. Just here's the deal. Let's do this. Let's get it done. And it's difficult to understand as an engineer, or programmer, or scientist. It's difficult to understand that, that there are people out there who don't get that. You'd be like, well, why don't you just tell people two plus two equals four and here's why? Seems like everybody should be able to get that. Yeah, I wish that was the case. But I'm pretty sure 235 million people don't get it when you tell them in that way. And it's important that these people at least start to kind of sort of get an idea. And we can't be condescending. We can't say these people, <laughs> as I just accidentally did. Another reason that I am not the right guy for this job. We need someone, though, who is able to communicate well to simplify, sexify, uh, emotionalize these wonderful, simple arguments and get them out there. And it ain't happening. And I have not seen anyone step forward to do it efficiently, effectively, uh, especially on a, a large scale. I don't know how to do that. And I don't know if the team perhaps would need to consist of... Uh, 
uh, funders, you know, maybe the person who has the money to fund this big effort, uh, the person who has that money doesn't have the skill set to do it. Maybe they are the engineer programmer mindset. Or maybe the person who has the money is only the communicator but doesn't have time. So maybe there needs to be a not-for-profit type organization started that is funded by somebody who has bucks, who is managed by someone who is good at managing organizations, budgets, etc., but then who is led, globally led, by maybe a board of directors who are philosophically sound, but also have some good knowledge of marketing and propaganda and uh, have good social or interpersonal intelligence in addition to the uh, logic, mathematical intelligence that led them to this philosophy. Then there needs to perhaps be other people on the team who are the the famous charismatic purveyors of this information. And again, though, this is this whole process is hurting cats. Um, I, I, the part that I would like to do would be to be the video content producer who just kindly and nicely explains an idea, but I've, I've given that a pretty good test and I've proven that I'm, I'm not the guy who's going to reach a lot of people. I don't have the charisma or whatever that other it is. I don't have that. I think maybe I, I don't have the money to fund at least not American people to do this. I, I might be able to fund Filipino people, hire a, a few and, and pay for them to all work for a year toward this, but that, that wouldn't be the right team. It needs to be top minds who are used to getting paid 100 and 150 grand a year. Those are the minds who we need to have on the team. So I don't have the funding for that, so I don't think I'm going to be the money guy. I think that, and I'm not good at managing people, um, I, I guess I'm decent at leading a team, but I think my overall would be kind of being the idea guy who puts it all together. However, I haven't done that yet. I'm not even sure I'm right for that. I, I, I wish each of these roles, I wish someone would just step into those and make this happen. Or, and, and I'm sure that the way I've described this organization, this this cooperative group of individuals who want the same thing or similar things, um, I, I'm sure that even the way I've just roughly described it, there's probably a better way to organize this organization, this group, um, that I haven't thought of yet. Or if we started doing it, we'd realize, oh yeah, um, we need this other group of people doing another thing. So this big, long podcast rant, yeah, we, we've, we've talked about intelligence, we've talked about the different kinds, we've talked about the need. No, we haven't. We've talked about my perceived need and that there is a, a a central planning group who helps disperse the ideas of uh, consistent libertarianism. Um, and, and maybe this is not an area that can be centrally planned. Maybe it's like uh, life itself. Maybe it's like all things social. Maybe it can't be centrally planned. However, I don't have a problem with social planning. Uh, or I'm sorry, with central planning when it comes to smaller organizations. I, mean, I think it's okay for families to be centrally planned by mom and dad. I think it's okay for, you know, small businesses to be centrally planned, even big businesses. Somebody's got to plan stuff out. That makes sense. Um, but for something as big as a society, I, I, I don't believe in that kind of central planning. However, I, I, I'm really good with the type of central planning that I am proposing that this organization, this group comes about who centrally plans not how people should live their lives or what they should choose, but simply how does a group of people who have a pretty good idea get that idea effectively, efficiently spread to a bunch of other people. So those are, those are kind of some of my thoughts, and I, I hope that they've made you think, and uh, maybe, maybe someone listening to this, maybe you are going to actually get up and make something happen. Maybe you're going to be the one to lead this effort. Maybe you're going to be the one to fund it. Maybe you're going to be the one to be a, a translator of 
good ideas into easily digestible ideas for the 235 million. Maybe you're going to play some other role. What role do you think you can play? 